If you haven't been in a medically induced coma for the past year, then you probably recognize the name Amber Heard. Maybe that name even strikes your ear with a certain ickiness. But whatever your feelings are on this person and the trial, whether you're Team Johnny, Team Amber, or you're a normal person, I guarantee you're probably wondering, where did Amber Heard come from? And is she really as bad as the media is painting her out to be? The answer may leave you feeling morally conflicted. Amber Heard was born on April 22, 1986 in Austin, Texas. She grew up in a fairly conservative household with an air of wealth running through it. Her father trained horses and she grew up riding horses with him while also fishing and hunting. She also participated in beauty pageants, which she would later denounce as objectifying. While she was raised Catholic, at 16, she started identifying as an atheist when her best friend died in a car accident. From there, the Texas lifestyle around her began to unravel. She soon enough dropped out of her Catholic high school and moved to Los Angeles to pursue a career in acting. Her career began with appearances in two music videos by the artists Kenny Chesney and Isley, respectively. She then secured her film debut in Friday Night Lights, followed by a string of forgettable straight-to-DVD flicks. But perhaps the most shocking thing about Amber Heard's career is that you, my dear, have probably seen her in something. You just didn't realize it was her. She's truly one of the many blonde white women who are sucked up by the Hollywood system, but unlike her contemporaries like Margot Robbie and Scarlett Johansson, she never really booked a role that allowed her to stand out in a mainstream way. But with that being said, here are some of her roles that you have probably seen but didn't realize you were watching Amber Heard at the time. In Zombie Land, she plays the hot girl from across the hall who tries to eat Jesse Eisenberg. She plays Seth Rogen's high school girlfriend in Pineapple Express, an ally to Eddie Redmayne's messy portrayal of a trans woman in The Danish Girl, and the blonde girl in Magic Mike XXL, Machete Kills, Paranoia, and The Adderall Diaries. But perhaps the role she is most known for is Mira in the first Aquaman movie. She's like a mermaid princess or something. Uh, I don't know. There's a bad wig involved. I didn't see it. But as you know by now, we aren't talking about Amber Heard because of her contributions to the world of film. We are talking about her because of her contributions to tabloid fodder. And if you thought Johnny Depp was the start of her tumultuous existence, then honey, buckle up because we're just getting started. Amber Heard first made headlines when she started dating photographer Tasia Van Rie. Heard has stated that she does not identify as any sexual orientation, but has always known that she was attracted to women as well as men. During the relationship from 2008 to 2012, Heard legally changed her last name to Van Rie, an act she reversed after they broke up. But it wasn't the name change that first attracted the public's attention. In 2009, Heard was arrested in Washington state at the Seattle-Tacoma International Airport after allegedly grabbing Van Rie by the arm and ripping a necklace chain from her neck before engaging in a physical and verbal altercation. A witness reported that when the pair were confronted, Van Rie was very dismissive and stoic and seemed to write it off as just another argument. But the witness observed injuries on her neck like a rope burn. Heard was then escorted out by the police and released on bail shortly after. This is the first time she had been arrested as far as we know. Van Rie would later comment on the situation as being misinterpreted and blown out of proportion. She even went as far to say that the police officer who responded to the incident did so in a homophobic and misogynistic manner. Apparently, the plot twist is that the arresting officer, Beverly Leonard, identifies as a gay woman. This incident would later be brought up in court as an attempt to color Heard as a person with a history of domestic violence. Um, abrasion on the side of her neck where the necklace was, um, like a rope burn. Which, I guess you decide for yourself if that's a fair argument, but the scandals are far from over. Kate James, one of Heard's formal personal assistants, was called as a witness by Johnny Depp's legal team. Now, we'll get to the trial in more detail later, so don't worry about that, but she was brought on to talk about the abuse she suffered while working for Heard between 2012 and 2015. According to James, she recalled numerous incidences where she awoke in the middle of the night to missed calls and barrages of texts from Heard that would be incoherent, nonsensical, and above all else, full of misplaced anger. James said she suspected Heard just wanted someone to lash out at. 
She further described a situation where, following her request for a raise, Heard leapt up from her chair, got all up in James' face, and screamed about how undeserving and disgusting it was that she would even consider asking for a raise. Four inches from my face, she was spitting in my face and telling me how dare I ask for the salary I was asking. James later said that this type of behavior extended to Heard's treatment of her own sister and mother, which was hard to watch. And now, one small thing before we move on to the big thing we're all waiting to dive into. Did you know that Amber Heard is technically an animal smuggler? In 2015, Depp and Heard traveled to Australia for vacation, but they made the crucial error of not declaring their two Yorkshire Terriers, Pistol and Boo, at customs. When flying internationally with an animal, you have to go through a lengthy paperwork process and quarantine period, which Heard chose not to do. It's unclear how it all got revealed, but when the Minister of Agriculture, Barnaby Joyce, found out, he gave them an ultimatum to send the dogs back to the States within 72 hours or Pistol and Boo would be euthanized. And just before the deadline expired, the dogs were sent back to the US. And while Depp faced no repercussions, Heard was hit with two charges of illegal import of animals and one charge of knowingly producing a false or misleading document. There's more to this story, because Heard allegedly tried to act like she had no idea that this was a rule, and even went as far to have her assistant lie under oath that no one in their party was aware of the regulations, which just wasn't true. First, some backstory on their relationship. Heard and Depp met in 2009 on the set of the often forgotten film, The Rum Diary. Depp plays a grungy, alcoholic author, and Heard plays... Yeah, you guessed it, a hot blonde. They both really dug deep to bring these performances to life. Everyone hated the movie, and it was a box office bomb, but it did create a spark for the two of them, who were both in their own respective long-term relationships. At the time, Heard was still with Van Rie, and Depp was still with long-term partner Vanessa Paradis, a French model turned actress. With Paradis, he had fathered two children, Lily Rose and John Christopher. The exact beginning of their relationship is up for interpretation, but they both publicly announced their splits from their partners at the beginning of 2012, and within two years, Heard was spotted with an engagement ring while out on the town. On February 3rd, 2015, the couple was married in a private ceremony of only 20 people at their home in Los Angeles. But the happy times did not last long. Not long after the incident with the dog smuggling and the cringe apology video that followed, on May 23rd, 2016, Amber filed for divorce. Four days after that, she obtained a temporary restraining order, claiming a few days earlier, Depp had thrown a phone at her face. While there was a bruise, the police alleged that there was no crime that took place. Of course, Depp denied this, and the case was taken to court, where much scrutiny was placed on how much spousal support money Heard was requesting. In the end, the case was settled out of court, and her request for a restraining order was dropped. She also took back her request for $50,000 in alimony. Together, they released a statement saying, Our relationship was intensely passionate and at times volatile, but always bound by love. Neither party has made false accusations for financial gain. She received $7 million from the divorce, but donated it to the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles and the American Civil Liberties Union. She also got the dogs, but he retained sole possession of all properties, including his private island in the Bahamas. Most importantly, a non-disparagement clause was inserted into the settlement that prevented either party from committing character assassination against the other. It sounds like a nice ending, right? All wrapped up, neat, End of story. Yeah, mm, not quite. In October 2018, Heard wrote an op-ed for the Washington Post in which she spoke in length about being the victim of spousal abuse and the long-term effects it can have. But most crucially, Depp was never mentioned by name. But that didn't stop the public, who had already been consuming this saga like wildfire, from doing some mental math to understand who she was talking about. This caused the always loud, always controversial UK paper, The Daily Mail, to call Depp a wife beater in a front page headline. The negative press began to swirl around Depp, and a narrative surrounding him and Heard began to develop where he was the abuser and she was the victim. He was soon enough ousted from the next Fantastic Beasts movie. But that didn't stop him from suing her for $50 million over the one thing they specifically agreed they wouldn't do, and thus began the longest trial of our entire lives. Every day there is seemingly some new insane development regarding this trial, and it's hard to keep up, but 
Here are some of the key takeaways that call into question, who really is Amber Heard? Some of the things that have come out and basically tarnished the idea of the innocent Amber Heard are damning. But there are also complicated facets of a relationship we will never truly understand. But with that being said, let's get into it. In February 2020, public perception began to switch in favor of Depp when a totally bonkers audio recording was leaked. In the recording from 2015, Heard can be, well, Heard, talking about an incident that occurred the night before where Depp claimed she punched him. In it, she corrects him and says that she hit him and did not punch him. In a second audio recording, she can be heard again, but this time she begins to taunt him and says, do you think that anyone would believe that a 115 pound woman attacked you? It's hitting you. It was not punching you. Babe, you're not punched. Tell the world, Johnny. Tell them Johnny Depp. I, Johnny Depp, man, I, I'm a victim of people who It's tough to hear. And it's frankly indicative of a deeper mental health issue that I do not feel confident in speculating on. But a doctor certainly did. So let's pivot to their take on the matter. Heard has stated that the source of any other abuse towards Depp comes from post-traumatic stress she suffered in response to the abuse she received from him. But Depp's legal team set out to debunk this by hiring a clinical and forensic psychologist named Shannon Curry to testify. Dr. Curry allegedly spent 12 hours with Heard in person and analyzed various court documents, videos, and evidence. In the end, she concluded that Heard most likely is suffering from borderline personality disorder and hysteronic personality disorder, but apparently not PTSD. She added that Heard is a type 36 personality, someone who is very concerned with their image, very attention seeking, very prone to externalizing blame to a point. She concluded that Heard could have been psychologically harmed by Depp's abuse, but that she was most likely grossly over exaggerating symptoms of PTSD. Clearly, Heard is not well. She has acted out in ways that her pretty privilege can no longer cover for her. There have been stories of her defecating in the bed the couple shared, and even slicing his finger with a knife. There are also really bad stories about Depp and his past relationships, and I encourage you to look into that as well. In the end, they're just two hurricanes caught in each other's paths, and the result was a disaster we just can't look away from.